Chinese New Year event, as you all know, was super hard because it was 100% RNG based. Uh, the Christmas event is totally different. You know, it has a, it's more of a community feel with planting Christmas trees. The Hawaii event has, uh, was more effort based and less RNG. And of course, we have our recent event, the World Cup, was a completely different uh, prediction event. So that was 2022. 2023 is going to be, oh, Yeah, I'm already on the next slide on mine. Okay. 2023, year of building. Woo! Yes! yes. I know we talk about this a lot, but it's finally happening. <laughs> so, in order to get there, what is still standing in our way? Three major things are standing in our way. We need to get an iOS, obviously. That's been a, a main problem for us. Anybody who tried to refer anybody knows the struggle of all oh, no, iOS, <laughs> right? Uh, we need to have global exports, and also we need to broaden our audience, especially now during the, the crypto winter, right, Bill? Yeah, I mean, so we've been doing a lot of work um, over the last couple of years, you know, bringing brands, trying to do promotion through the platform. And we made a significant amount of progress last year, and then everything's halted, I think, around the time that um, FTX crashed. So when FTX went down, every brand that we had been working with basically walked away and said, like, look, we don't want to have anything to do with crypto. We don't want to have anything to do with uh, NFTs. And even though we kind of explained to them that it's not really a core component of the game, um, because it's it is um, sort of so front and center, that ended up becoming a challenge. And so, um, as Darun will get into, we're gonna be changing things up a little bit, um, not in a way that's gonna significantly impact, I think, for the crypto enthusiasts, but it will broaden uh, the audience for the game. Yep. Um, it's also gonna help us, honestly, like a lot with iOS. Yes. So we have a solution to all these problems. We're gonna take it to the next level. We've been working this for a while, now it's time to take Coinland World to the next level and take it to the Cubiverse. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, so Cubiverse is like Coinland World 2.0, that's the best way to look at it. So uh, it, with Coinland World, that was the battle for us. We, uh, we needed this to, to run a lot of experiments, see what works, see what doesn't work. We feel like our, in the first three years we learned a lot and we learned enough to know what can we do to fix those issues and make the game a lot better at the same time. So that's what we're going to do with Cubiverse. Into the Cubiverse we go. So first of all, have no fear, the Cubiverse game and the World game, they share the same game. Let the game work, the game up. So if you own a green vault on the corner of the street here, 
I know somebody owns a big boat on the corner of the street there. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so if you do, if you have that vault in Cornered World and you were walking into Cubiverse, that vault will also be yours there. Everything you own, everything in your inventory will also carry over into the Cubiverse game. So Cube, Cornered World was, for us, it was a, a place where we had to experiment with big ideas. Like I said many times, nobody's ever built a game like this, so we can't just follow somebody else, right? So, and, and, and with that comes some drawbacks, and some of the drawbacks are that sometimes you just have to try something and it might not work. But maybe some of you here uh, were uh, playing a game when we had a, a very brief period where people were competing for keyboards. I don't know if anybody remembers that. That didn't go over so well. <laughs> so we have been experimenting with a lot of different things. We've been testing different beta features and we've been collecting a lot of data. So with QReverse, we're going to do a lot of improvements. First of all, we're going to increase the constant density. So we have a new POI uh, algorithm. Uh, so we're going to refill uh, every country. Uh, so there is going to be higher density of vaults for everybody to hit. So one of the things that uh, we found for adoption was that if some... Oh, it's when people say uh, <laughs> In YouTube ads. Anyway, um, when, you know, when you would fire up, somebody brand new would fire up the app, and then you start spinning around on the map, and you're like, well, what does this do? There's nothing here. So we absolutely want to eliminate that and make sure that the first experience that somebody has with the game, they fire up the app. It's a big live map. There's lots of content for you, no matter where you are. Yep. And uh, next thing is the new build system. What is the new build system? That's actually the... We used to call it the tagging system, but while we were working on it, we realized that tagging is just a small component of a much bigger system, so we, we renamed that the build system. So QBverse, when it launches, it will have the uh, build system active and ready to go. So once you get in the QBverse, you will instantly be able to start building. Okay, new loot system. Uh, no more 333. That's gone. Oh. Oh. And you will have a completely revamped loot system with much more variety. Um, I'll, I'll, next one also can give more details about that. A new reward system. This is uh, one of the crucial components to get is a uh, list the app store is now when you solve vaults and you get your reward box, you will get cubic coins instead of directly in crypto. And then you will have a new export system where you can choose what you want to do with these cubic coins. You can export them to crypto, you can export them to gift cards. And the goal is for us to keep adding more export options over time. You can even think your airline miles, whatever we can find that people seem valuable, you will be able to convert your cubic coins into. Now let's take a closer look at how it's going to work. Uh, divided by uh, Apple and Android. So on Android, you will collect the cubic coins and then you will have an export system and you can choose that to turn them into uh, gift cards or turn them into crypto. For the App Store, we're going to launch first uh, with the goal of getting the gift card exports. And this is, this is a hand that's forced by us by Apple. Apple is not going to approve us if we're giving people Bitcoin at this point. I'm fully confident at some point Apple is going to have to change its tune uh, when it comes to crypto. As soon as they do and as soon as they allow us, we will add the crypto component to the Apple uh, version as well. Yeah, this really will change the narrative. So I know that a lot of players, um, even, as, even before um, uh, you know, the crypto crash of last year, people were coming to us saying like, hey, I can't refer my friends or my family or my coworkers anymore because the second I tell them you're in Bitcoin, they immediately stop listening. So, you know, the narrative now becomes, hey, do this, play the game, do the things that you normally do, and at the end of the week, you get a couple of free lattes. Just walk into Starbucks, convert into a Starbucks gift card, walk out with some coffees, right? I think that really changes the way that people will perceive the game, and I think it makes it much easier for us to get a wider uh, variety of players and a mass audience for the game. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so 2023, the year of building, what are we building, right? So one thing you need to keep in mind is we are now building the foundations of the Cubiverse. And the Cubiverse, our goal is to have by the summer of 2024 to have a million users in the Cubiverse. That's our goal. You should hype that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, I think that's true. We are uh, been working with a lot of different uh, vendors and a lot of uh, mentors and partners of ours on how to start doing uh, significant amounts of marketing around the QBverse. So as we start getting there and as we start seeing the new features being put out, as we um, get onto the iOS store, we have a plan to go and reach the next million users for the platform. Yes. So everybody in here, everybody is playing now. You have to think yourself, you're the pioneers of this metaverse that we are creating, and that's why this year we give, we're gonna give you the tools to actually start building. Yeah. Okay, but what is the QBverse, right? So the QBverse is a gamified layer built on top of the real world, and it rewards people for interacting with the physical world in fun and engaging ways. The more you interact with the QBverse, the more coins you can earn, and then it's for every player value means something different, so some people have no interest in Ethereum, for example, and, and they rather have a target gift card. So with those options, uh, for everybody will find something of value out of playing this game. What makes you reverse lit, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> right, I like to think of, so why are so many people enjoying this game so much? It is because in my book, it's a win-win-win. You do something that is good for you, but you do it like, for example, walking, but you do it in a way that is fun. And then on top of that, you get rewarded with something that you, you perceive to be valuable for yourself. So it's a win-win-win. So it's, it, I think that's why people really like it. So you get to exercise, you get to learn, you get to explore, you get to discover brands, and you get to make friends. So that sounds all awesome to me. I really, um, when I explain this to brands and when I explain this game to uh, potential investors, I frame it as like it's an anti-social media application, right? This will get you off of your couch, give you some motivation to go out and interact with the real world, you know, get healthier, but also learn things because we don't make money from radicalizing you, right? We want you to learn facts, we want you to get smarter, um, and I think from what we were uh, gathering from most of the players, everyone enjoys that. New trivia comes in, yes, there's a little bit of moaning, but <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, I think everyone loves learning new things. And then I really want to um, hype up the social aspect of it, right? An event like this can't happen unless people really want to engage with other players, with people in their communities, and their neighbors, right? And that's one of the other powerful things about Coin Hunt World is that we're not trying to divide you and keep you from interacting with your, with your neighbor. We want you to work together collaboratively and build a, bit, a better metaverse, right? Every time somebody adds content into their local neighborhood, it impacts and makes it better for everyone. Yep, 100%. So the most important part of this slide is very simple, right? So if you look at uh, what, what are the big metaverse players right now, you have Facebook Meta with their um, Horizons, you have Decentraland, you have um, Sandbox, you have uh, Cubiverse of Coin World. Guess which one of those has the highest engagement numbers? Cubiverse. Uh, Coin World has, we have. Yeah. And guess who out of those four is not doing any marketing? <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at some of the features of the Cubiverse. Cubistats. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 class, element, and a zodiac sign based on when they're printed. Zodiac sign? Yeah. Zodiac sign? Wow, interesting. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. The witch class is magician, element is the moon, and it has a zodiac. Uh, I don't even know what the sign is. <laughs> Summer QB uh, class is chill, element water. The tiger QB class is predator, element is grass. Wow. And so every QB will have those and will have a level. And this will come into play in a lot of different ways. I don't know what we're going to share yet, <laughs> yes. but there'll be even more stats and information about each QB. We really want you to be able to customize them and make each one unique. Okay, so let's go into build mode. So this is uh, something we talked about earlier, hunter watches. 
So we were gonna give you the tools to build the computers. Like normal games, uh, you would just, they would just, oh man, okay, let's make our game up look really pretty. Uh, and, it, and it, the easiest way is just to have the developers do it for you, right? That's tightly controlled, you know you know what the end result is gonna be. But that's too easy, so we decided to do it the hard way and we're building tools so you can do it. Um, so the QB first caters to different player types, right? You already know that. Hunter, top hunter is right here, where is he? My Kiki Tiki. My Kiki. Oh, yeah. 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 She's running back. Top trader is Bin now. Top QB producer is West Beach Music. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many hours he must have in a dark parking lot, but. <laughs> Top Explorer, yeah, Haze. I'm a little sure if we should applaud that. And Top Builder, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. That's going to be decided later this year. Building structures, we already talked about this in previous hundreds, but I will reiterate a little bit. So building structures, you have four steps. Buy it, stamp it, build it, operate it. So you buy a construction blueprint, you take it to a print shop to stamp it, you take the stamped blueprint to a compatible tag, then you can start the building process. Once the building process is finished, now you have to staff one of your cubies in there to operate it, and then it goes live and all hunters will be able to use your structure. And that's where some of the stats on your QB are going to matter, right? So those stats, the attributes of your QB will determine how efficient they are in the structure that you're producing. So, like the first step is to get a construction blueprint, so that's why we're going to be opening a new construction blueprint shop. And in that shop, uh, we will have four types of construction blueprints. Decorative, functional, premium, and iconic. So today, we're going to go to a couple of them in detail, what they will be doing, how they, what they're going to look like. Um, so yeah, I guess you, you guys want to see that? Yeah! Yes! yes. <laughs> All right, first, decorative structures. Decorative structures, they don't have any influence on the game, uh, on the gameplay but they will be used to uh, pimp up your game map oh, from nice the step. pretty boring uh, gray, green, blue patches of land to something that looks a little bit more like a cool kick-ass game map, yes. right? So, yes. Yes. One, yes. yes, so one thing you can do is you can buy a pack of trees, uh, you can build those on any tree tag, cost 10 crystal keys, any stamp to activate, and of course you don't need to stuff a cube in a, in a tree to operate it, so that's not necessary. <laughs> Next up, street lights, same thing. Build on any street lamp tag, 10 crystal keys. Um, one step to activate, no cube is needed. Next up, a bench, same thing. Build on a bench tag, 10 crystal keys. Um, any stamp to activate does not require a cube to operate. You guys are starting to realize why stamps are important? Yeah. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that we can turn this into this. Nice. Yeah. So if you yes, yes. Yes. if you're proud of your hotspot, you you've built it out. You, you know it it became a destination for all local hunters to go and do their daily walk, their daily hunt. You can now turn it into something much cooler looking for everybody. Okay. So those are decorative structures. Let's take a look at the first functional structure, the resin tree. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. You can build it on any tree tag, because 50 crystal keys and one stamp also no QB required. But what does it do? Where is Harris? Harris is going to be happy with this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can shake it once a week for resin, but it grows over time. So every week oh, you have a little bit more resin than the week before. Oh, that's However, awesome. it grows really slow in cities, the pollution, the smog, you know, trees are like that. <laughs> Yes. Yes. So the city guys, they don't really have much lesson. <laughs> and it grows really fast in rural areas. Next up, the trade shack. Yeah. You can build on any tag, cost 100 crystal keys, one stamp to activate, any cubic can operate this. So this one needs a cubic, but you can pick anyone. 
and the owner will get 5% kickback. But what does it do? A trade check is the most efficient way to turn keys into resources, both during regular play and event play. So if you need paint, if you need, if you're in an event, the trade check is, is, is going to be your best value. And also, into every trade check, so, so you, you open a trade check, you solve a trivia question, you get a resource box. Uh, every time you do that, it also has a percentage chance to drop the resources from the formula, from the QB that is staffing the trade check. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, that means if you put your vampire in the trade check, it can drop a lot. Renee. <laughs> Uh, next functional structure, lucky found. I think this one we've been teasing for a while. So you can build it on a found tag, cost 100 crystal keys, wants them to activate. Uh, uh, this one will need a, sp a specific, uh, a QB of a specific class or element. Oh. Details will follow later, of course. And the owner, oh, well, elements well, have to be water, right? And the uh, owner gets 5% kickback. Nice. What does it do? You throw a blue key in the fawn. The fawn spits out three different categories out of the ten that are active. You can either select one of those three or just uh, throw another uh, key in the fawn until you see the uh, uh, category you like. And then you select that one and then for the next uh, 60 minutes that, that category will always be one of the three that will be served up while you're having oh. oh. So obviously this allows for a lot more strategic play, think about happy hour, think about uh, daily quests, think about events. This, this will help you out a lot. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> happy hour. I stopped writing. That's happy hour. Right there. Functional structure, vending machine. Build on any post office or ATM tags. Other crystal keys, one stamp. Uh, again, it is a certain QB of a certain class and element. Owner gets 5% kickback. Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, I said here, like, you need to understand, you're not building these things just for yourself. If you put that in your local area, all your local hunters will be using your thing, and, and their hunting grounds will now be better, so. Uh, what does it do? You can go there, and you can enter a gift code, and if you enter a gift code, um, uh, it will spit out a, a contest box. Yes. But the way it will work is we will use this. This is actually a structure specific for content creators. Yes. We can give content creators codes that they can give out to the people on their streams or on, on their um, podcasts. And then uh, the first 20, let's say we give 20 codes to um, Ladies of the Hunt. The first 20 people are watching the stream and take the code to a vending machine. The vending machine will spit out a specific prize that we defined. To run for. Nice. Yes. All right. Functional structure, you already saw a sneak preview of this one. The advanced print job. You can build it on any existing print job, it costs 100 percent keys, needs a stamp, uh, a certain QB, uh, only gets 5 percent kickback. What does it do? Acts as a regular print job, but it's shorter print times. But uh, all regular print jobs will be able to stamp the low level blueprints, construction blueprints. But in order to stamp high-level construction blueprints, you will need to go to an advanced print job. And, okay, and one thing also I want to mention is everything I said so far, of what they do, all these things, that's all just level one of these structures. More functionality will get unlocked as you level up the structure, but that's for the future. <laughs> Premium structure, we'll talk about that. First yes. one, pizzeria. Build on pizzeria tags, cost a thousand crystal keys. This one needs three unique, unique stamps to activate, Shit. and it will need a specific QB class element, only gets 5% kickback. All right, but what does it do? Two things. The first thing it does is the same like a sushi quest, but now a pizza quest, right? So just eat at this restaurant, uh, high chance to get the, um, the rare pizza QB blueprint, low chance to get the epic pizza chef QB Shit. blueprint, always drops pizza resources. But it has a second function is if you build this on a pizzeria that is in our network, for uh, in the UK it will be Pizza Hut, in the USA it will be uh, California Pizza Kitchen, Kitchen, then you will also have a second option there and you, oh, first of all when you build it, it will not look like a generic one, it will look like a branded one, right, so you will see a Pizza Hut structure instead of the pizzeria structure, 
and you will be able to turn your cubic coins into gift cards for Pizza Hut. So you, you can go there, turn it into a gift card, and at the same time eat and get your pizza price done. So not only are we you know, trying to get you to go to these restaurants, we also, in, in fact, sponsor you to eat there. <laughs> Premium structure flower shop. Blue on flower shop tags, Costas crystal keys, three unique stamps, and it's a specific QB, only gets 5% kickback. What does it do? It has a selection of flower arrangements for sale. You can't buy them for yourself, you have to give it to another player. So you can just buy a, 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 a flower arrangement, you pick the one you like, you send it to another player. When you receive one, you will get a 24 hour boost. Cosmetic boost, so they're not going to influence your gameplay. And I'm going to give a couple examples. Maybe for 24 hours, you will have a cute pet following around during your hunt. Uh, or maybe during for 24 hours, while you're solving balls, flowers start sprouting around the vaults and everybody can see it. So you're kind of influencing the map as you're hunting for all the other hunters to see. Okay, premium structure coffee shop. Build on a coffee shop tag, now the crystal keys. It's three unique stamps to activate. You need a completely compatible class element, 5% kickback. What does it do? It has a drinks menu, you can pick a drink. And this one gives, your QB is going to drink it and it's going to give you a gameplay buff. And different drink, drinks will give different buffs. For example, you could have a red drink, for that for 20 minutes all the paint drops you get will be red paint. So if you need a specific uh, paint that you're looking for, uh, stopping by the coffee shop first is really going to be helpful. And again, the same with the pizzeria. If you uh, build this on a generic, um, Coffee shop, it will be the generic coffee structure. If you build this on a Costa, for example, in the UK, it will look like a Costa, and you will again have a secondary function. You will be able to, to turn your cubic coins into a Costa gift cards at that spot. So this really helps. This is the, uh, the narrative that we're talking about. You'll be able to walk into Starbucks um, after playing Cubi uh, Burst all week and convert the Cubi coins into Starbucks gift card. Uh, right there. When is QBWorks going to launch? December. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. 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 So um, very shortly we're going to uh, start to have closed betas uh, leading up to it, but uh, it will be a full open launch this summer. Um, I know you're going to have a million questions about this, that's why we're already announcing the next Hunter Lodge where we'll have a lot more detail about it. Uh, it's going to be May 7th, 11 a.m. PST. Okay, that's it guys, thank you so much.